young woman. You need to grow up, young girl, because you're all in your head. There's no such thing as a death cult. You, you're hanging out with the wrong people, right? Or is it real? Is it a real phenomenon where there's really bad people out there in the world looking to, looking to uh, prey on others? Now, you're, you're in, I watched your video. You called them groomers, groomed. You said they're targeting 60 to 70 year old uh, age group. It's a cult bullied into being used uh, and we're supposed to take it. You called it patriotic stalking. And, uh, uh, you, tell me about it. Well, I think that there's um, more than one level to what's going on. Um, one of the reasons they they use different age groups for different purposes, but when I say they, I mean it's a a uh, it's a culture that seems harmless, you know, like doing uh, rock and roll things with light gore stage settings. That, that's that's no big deal. It's it's you know it, it's what they what some people release their attention at. But then you have something going on from a few people who are very carefully coordinating what they're doing. And they use, first they use death as a, a, uh, a point of contact. Death. You Finding said death. People who, who have death in the family gives you, if you're reason for knowing somebody is that there is a common experience with death in a family, then at one level that's normal, but at another level, if you're seeking out strangers for that purpose, that's where you're starting to get into the cult stuff. And when it's attached to then manipulating those people into other actions, that's when it becomes a dangerous cult because this is what this political group is doing um, in terms of, I, and we see it at a bigger level. I mean, war is a death cult, okay. Right. But at the weird, crazy level that we're seeing in these YouTube social groups or internet social groups, forgive me, I, I live in a, in a YouTube bubble. But, right. um, me too. The, the thing of seeking out people to make that connection and then manipulating that connection is how they are recruiting and then radicalizing because you can you can tell a lot about a person if you can get into a bonded friendship over death in the family before too much longer you've got that person's button you know how to manipulate that person and then from there, you move into the extremism and the terrorism. Right. So you have a personal experience with this. You, you, um, I know that you had a, uh, a situation in 2011 or 12. Your daughter, you were, she was on a college campus, allegedly suicide, suicide or murder. You suspect it was murder. And it was you, 2010. 2010. And you suspect that... It was some sort of uh, death cult, uh, online death cult. Was it an online thing where she, you believe she got sucked no, into it? No, no. We were familiar with some of these people in real life. One of them is online, and it was through having to deal with him. I was dealing with him for years just as a personal stalker. And the, the family knew about him, and they treated everything at the personal level, just like most people do, which is how they get you. You, you don't see the whole picture. Right. But then I noticed, I knew that he had spoken of being in a gang. I knew that he was using forums in the anti-cult world, particularly the, what used to be called the Rick Ross Forum, and then it changed into the cult education Institute for him. He was using that one to set up little hunting parties, and he was recruiting in Facebook. He was recruiting military people. He was a military reject himself. So I know that was going on as that person doing it. When he showed up 
in my uh, YouTube chats under my videos, I then saw a couple of people show up alongside him. And while I was blocking him, I was looking at two other profiles, which turned out to be the same person. And I said, he's here with his gang. And that's when I made the decision. And it was right at the point of the Q hijack. That's what, I mean, that's how I keep the time straight in my head. Um, that January, or, well, no, it was November, because the Q hijack was right after that. It was November 17th. And um, I said to myself, I am going to smoke this guy and his gang out. And I thought it was going to be, you know, a handful of idiots, just stupid people. Right. But it turned into a much, much bigger thing, as you know, because it turned into connecting up with the entire political wing, which when you get above the, the street thug level, and these military rejects, and you get above their level, you start getting into the political party. You get into both the Republican and Democrat parties, and then inside the regular political parties, you've got the fanatics, the fanatical cult. Like, in, I believe that inside the Clinton party, there's the Clinton, I mean, it's the Clinton party, the Democrat party, there's a Clinton cult that really controls it. Right. Similar things in the Republicans, but I'm familiar with the Democrats, and that's the cult. We ended up face to face with the very top level of that cult, and that's a death cult because they have been using. We, we were talking about when I say we, I'm talking about myself and and my my people I grew up with and neighbors. Right. In Pittsfield, Massachusetts, back in the 19. 80s and 90s, we were talking about the death cult because they were taking over the arts. Mm -hmm. And our art studios, we, we were being told we needed to do this death art. And that's all it was, was an art movement. We didn't connect it to any of this. Right. Then there was the women's center who started to use um, violent killings of children as propaganda, and we started talking about the families of, of young murder victims uh, being pressured to become part of the propaganda machine. And so the death cult, I look, I've been looking at death cult in this Democrat Party context. Not all Democrats, but the, the controlling group in Massachusetts. That is what we were looking at. And it was years later, really only in recent years, that when I put the timeline together, the timeline of the death cult matches up with the timeline of the Whitey Bulger Mafia control. Mm -hmm. So there you go, right there. Ma I mean, Mafia, obviously, even, even people laugh at the Godfather, but there's a lot of truth in those movies. It is a death cult. Yeah. Well, the, you know that the Gambino crime guy, he just got shot by what this reporter suspects as being a, uh, not, not so much a mob hit, but a, an actual um, online cult. He went down the QAnon rabbit hole, and he was either convinced or convinced himself to go shoot the guy, shoot Frankie Cali, boss of the Gambino crime family here in New York, or he, he, had, um, he went to Mayor de Blasio's house. He went uh, to a federal building to try to arrest Adam Schiff do you think he came up with all these ideas himself, or was it, you know, my thought? Here's what well, I want to know. I, yeah, I should blow your mind with something that I think is a fact that's in your documents that you have and have not looked at. If you ever go back, and the reason uh, I don't want to bring up the name of another YouTuber that's going to cause things to, to go in another direction, mm -hmm. but... If we can go back to the Q, I refer to the Q hijack, right. and that is where the cult thing comes in. Um, about you want 2000, me to tell you my personal belief about the Q thing? About 2017. Yeah, go ahead. It's your, it's your time. Go yeah. ahead. Well, my personal encounter with the Q thing, and what I still believe was true, was that originally it was set up as a kind of... of quiz game that was definitely part of a military project 
to try to break the cult hold that politics, because the military was watching the political stuff become cult-like. And so I believe that some good people did put the idea together that this quiz game would be a good way to help people think. And when I stumbled across it, that's exactly what I thought it was, was a political quiz game. Then it turned into the, the craziness um, as there was that whole hijack thing that happened. That I recognized some of the cult members coming in through that hijack. And so um, the, the, the um, ask me a question to get me back on track. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I will. Here's what I'm, right you, you have a lot of, you have a lot of information. You see the big picture. What I'm, what I'm concerned with, and I know, I know you've ha you're having, watching your video series, watching your stuff, I know that you're having problems with individual um, thugs, uh, bullies, gang stalkers, these, these gangs. And I just wanted to say, like, when I was a kid, right, I grew up in New York, right, I know what a gang is. No one admits yeah. that, no one admits they're in the gang. It's like the mafia. Oh, Nobody. Yeah. There's no. There's no. Oh, I signed up for the mafia, and uh, here's my here's my badge and my uh, you know my certificate. No, you're you hang out with the gang and you're in the gang. You act like the gang. You you chat with the gang. You you interact with the gang. You back up the gang. If someone hits a gang member, that's like hitting you. That's a gang. Yeah, well, you, you want to know a funny story about that? Mm -hmm. true, true story. Okay, I grew up in Webster, Massachusetts, right. and my family are all from that area. Well, in my neighborhood, children were absolutely the safe that you could play and go anywhere, and nobody, and there was always, you know, the men, they, they all were factory men, and the, the, the women too worked and whatever, and there was always an adult sitting on the porch somewhere, just kind of looking over things. So we didn't feel supervised, but in reality we were. Well, I didn't understand until growing up. One of my uncles, my uncle Jack, who was, is well known to everyone outside the family as Frank, he was the head of the local textile workers union. Okay, so he was the head of that local. I think it was 249 or 259. My other uncle, Joe Hewlett, was the chief of police. And what's strange is I never understood it, but my side of the family did not speak to anyone involved with police. And, of course, as a kid, we don't know what's going on, but looking back, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. My, my father was one of eight brothers. And they pretty much, until, you know, the 70s maybe, and nobody messed with, and I remember as a kid, things would, there would be someone would approach or something, and someone would say, are you a Manto girl? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, yeah. Which one, who's your father? Is it, is it this one or that one? And I'd say, that's my uncle. And they'd say, oh yeah, you're James's daughter. Okay. And they would kind of signal to everyone else, you don't touch this kid. Right, so we all we all know we all know we all know what a gang is. Your gang, your gang is a kid. My gang, right? We know. But let's talk. Let's get to the let's get to the real stuff about this online gang, right? And I'll, I'll name names if you're if you're not comfortable naming names, because I do know that you're having a problem. You, I've seen I see the videos. You got this, you know, you got this Lepo guy. You got this Dave Acton, this Thomas Schoenberger, this uh, I don't know about Steve Outram. Is he on your back as well? And and a whole slew of other characters uh, are are seem to be uh, piling up on you for talking about this kind of thing. Now, my have, I have the same experience. That they, you know, I, I know all these characters, and I try not to talk about them because I'm a news guy. I, talk, I riff on the news. That's what I do. You know? But unfortunately, uh, these folks come at you. So where do you, where do you stand on it? And I want to talk about what happened today with Texas and the, uh, the explosion down there. Where, where are you with these guys? Are you being, are you being attacked by a cult, a, a, a uh, a bunch of bullies, a bunch of scam artists, a bunch of extortionists, or is it all in your head, Denise? <laughs> I wish it were only in my head. Um, no, what, what's going on here is a perfect storm of like three different threads coming together. One mm. thread, you know, the gangs we were just talking about are the natural organic family 
clan tribal thing. Right. What's going on in YouTube is because of the technology of the internet, one lunatic like that guy that, that you know, I described um, being, you know, he's tracking my family and everything. I mean, basically he was doing it on behalf of people that had these old school gang backgrounds. And he doesn't know who paid him or why. He just goes for it. Right. So here he is on the internet, and all of a sudden you've got a situation where lunatics who have similar mental illnesses find each other. If you join one of these victim clubs, okay, a support group, narcissistic disorder support group, you can form a team of narcissistic. Let me stop if you, you there. Let me, let me stop you there. That's an excellent point. So you're saying that because of the vast size of the internet, that crazies, like-minded, broken people find each other and coalesce. In a kind right, of a, and then other people get over them and invite them into a, you know, people who need a leader right. wander around as little groups, and then someone else comes along and says, hey, I can be your leader, and there you've got Tom Schoenberger. Right, right. And, and you know, yeah, right I'm now, talking about acting, okay, something that, that, that people need to understand what's going on here. Did you know that he graduated in 1985 from Corpus Christi College, which is now Texas A&M? Yeah, I, I did. I do know that. I know a lot about the guy because yeah. I have to. So his focus, the focus is on me. He's orchestrating something due to some. So he's got a wire crossed in his head, and he's orchestrating things. Right. So and him and would you agree? Really spooky. Would you agree that Schoenberger and Acton are they're like the two pigs in in Animal Farm? They're they're competing for the attention of the farm. Would you put them? They're they're both leaders. They're not competing. I think they're working together. You think they work together? They work together, but even in a gang, there's leader and co-leader, and every once in a while, a gang a leader will knock off the other leader to take oh, yeah. from, that sort yeah. of thing is what I'm talking about. I mean, that's my yeah, experience. It's, like, yeah. it's competitive narcissism. Right, right, right. Who can out-screw the... Who can out-slime uh, the other guy? Yeah. So, and, they, and now, so we could call the clubhouse, right, of this group. Let's use this group. It's not the only group on... on uh, the internet, but it's a, a really fascinating one because you and I both have, uh, and a lot of other people have, a personal experience with this group. So, so they they come together at the clubhouse. Right now, they have a club leader like the the uh, the maitre d, or in Animal Farm, the pig uh, squealer, right? Or one of those pigs, one of the pigs that rounded up the other animals, and that would be Lepo, right? Is it safe to say that they they come together on this site, and and that's where the hate speech, they hate the guy on the screen, whoever's being projected on the screen. Hate this person, convince the person, convince the people in the chat that the person they're seeing is so sinful, is a pedophile, is a stalker, is a, is a child molester, is a murderer, murdered, right? Convince the people with absurdities that are in the group, and whoever believes it becomes part of that, that, uh, that uh, brainwashed crowd. Is that, is that a fair well, yeah. assessment? Look at, look at the clanging cowbell system and think about Pavlov's dog. <laughs> yeah. There you go, right there. It's a training ground. Now, if you were, let's, let's go back to the old days, okay? If you decided you were going to be the top dog in your neighborhood, right. you're going to get guys together in the street corner and flex your muscles and get new tattoos. But if you're going to be the top dog on the Internet, then you're going to play games with these, these mental training programs, and you're going to find a way to get people to coalesce in a place where you can affect them. And basically, that thing with that level character, that's like a street corner for people to, to, to play tattoo games. And unfortunately, other people coming along think it's a comedy routine. They don't understand that the whole thing with the cowbell and all that stuff, that actually has a scientific basis. If you spend time, you say, like, some of them will say, oh, I'm just going to have, you know, have it on while I do something. That's the worst thing you can do. When you have something on in the background, you're allowing your subliminal nerves to be clicked to it. And basically, he's getting, he puts the cowbell over the words so that people will learn to hate on image, not even take time to find out what the person is saying. They're going to hate on image. Right. Good point. And, and I, well, I decided, I did, told him he does not have permission to use myself. I told him to stop it. Then he made it clear he wasn't going to stop unless I sue him. And I know that if I sue him, there'll be three others behind him. I'll have to sue them, so forget it. Okay. Well, that's not the way to go. To do with it. Yeah, that's yeah. not the way to go. Let them, you know, I, 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 they use all my stuff too. That's fine. 